also good morning to Evans family and friends. Let us rejoice. I tell you, it is such an honor to be back in this house. years. Yeah. You know, the God, the Lord saw fit for us to come back into this house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just does something to me. And I pray that it does something to you to be back in this house. Yeah. Where our grandfather yeah. laid bricks. Yeah. Where our uncle laid bricks. Yeah. So we rejoice in being in this house this morning. in the spirit. So please turn your cell phones off and um, at this time we're going to have the opening hymn. What's that? The opening hymn, What a Fellowship. Because this is a great fellowship and we rejoice in it. So let's just get it.
and every person that is present. Indeed, within the brick and the mortars of this place, we know that you are present. And we come here standing on our feet, but also standing on the foundation of a faith that has preceded us throughout the generations. So we come here, but we are leaning on the everlasting arms of a faith that has sustained us in this family through multiple generations, and we are so very grateful. So this invocation is an invocation in our awareness that yes, we've been brought a mighty long way, but we have a long way to go. The God that has brought us here thus far will bring us to where we need to be. So we're happy today. We allow this moment to be as if the skies opened up and let some rain fall. Refreshing, renewing our souls. Thank you, dear God, for this opportunity to gather as family and be grounded in the faith that has sustained us so. In your holy name we pray. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a solo by Reverend Ferran Green.
changes things. Yeah. Yeah. Lift in the name of Jesus, change your environment. Yeah. Yeah. So lift his name up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. At this time, we're going to have scripture reading. The Old Testament, Psalms 133, verses 1, by Jaden Haman, right? Haman. And the New Testament, Ephesians 4, 31 to 32, by Myrna Evans. I mean, I'm sorry, Myrna Phillips. <laughs> Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Ephesians 4, 31 through 32. Um, let all bitterness and wrath and yeah. anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Amen. Amen. So at this time, you know what? God loves a cheerful giver. Yes. So at this time, we're going to have offering. And I just want to mention also, too, that it was brought to my attention that we have been celebrating Evans and Friends Day for over 70, 70 years? Wow. 70 years. That's, that's before, our, before my time, before our time. So it's just something about the foundation of celebrating family and friends. So when um, our ancestors decided to celebrate this uh, occasion, uh, they didn't even have any idea of how impactful it was to bring family together. So I just want to encourage you all to um, remember the hardship that they had to endure to just come together to, to just <coughs> Bless the name of the Lord. So as we uh, come to give offering, we also want to be mindful that it was over 20 years ago that we were in this house. And we want to bless this house for opening doors to this family. They never closed the doors, but because we have not been here over 20 years, there's something about that. It's a beginning. So we want to make sure that we bless this house in this offering, okay? Because all the donations that is collected today will be uh, turned over to this house as a blessing from the Evans family. So be mindful. He was always done that way. Oh, okay. Praise God. Thank you for that information.
so much for that. You know, when we can just take a moment and reflect back yes. of yes. where we where we have come from and the road we have traveled to get where we are today. And so we just thank God for the travel. We thank God for the bumps in the road so that we can be able to just grow from it. So those type of testimonies, those type of reflections, we thank you for. And we still stand. And we still stand. By faith, we still stand. So we just thank God for that. But right now, because of um, Grandmama, which is Mabel Evans, and Dee, which is Henry Evans, because of what they deposit in his kids and what his kids deposited in their kids, we have a young man that is the fruit from all of that. Jeremiah Brown is a 16-year-old, a 16-year-old student that I took. Nehemiah. I got so caught up. <laughs> His name is Nehemiah. Okay. Nehemiah, the builder. Yes. yes. Nehemiah Brown is a 16-year-old student that attend Our Lady of Good Counsel High School. Right. He currently holds a 4.0 GPA. <laughs> and he's involved in extracurricular activities at school. He plays football in the position of defensive back and plans to continue his sports endeavor in college. He also participates in speech and debate team right. in the area of original oratory. Outside of being a student, Nehemiah is employed and has his own clothing brand yeah. business called MFM, Motivated for more. Yes. Despite his busy daily schedule, he faithfully still finds time to indulge in the Word of God. Amen. Nehemiah accepted God into his life at the age of 10, May 6, 2018. In 2022, the thirst for more knowledge of God became real. He began to study to show himself approved by reading, studying, and praying faithfully. Nehemiah was able to disciple people around him at school and at work. Nehemiah and his family are members of First Baptist Church of Capitol Heights, where he is led by an amazing pastor, Harold Lafayette Duggar Sr. and First Lady Odelia Duggar. On February 4th, 2024, his pastor gave him his first opportunity to share a message to God's people. Keep going. Amen. Nehemiah's favorite scripture is uh, Galatians 6, 4. Pay carefully attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and, you'll, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone. Right. At this time, Nehemiah Brown. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Let's get God some praise again for the For those who have your Bibles, I would like y'all to join me in Hebrews 5, verses 8 through 9. I will read it from the NLT version. Thus concludes, it says, Even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as a perfect high priest. And he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him. For those taking notes, my title today will be Suffering to Win. The first thing I want y'all to know is that there is a purpose for your suffering. The suffering slash discipline you face is meant to teach you a lesson that will carry you through life. 
I don't know how many athletes are in the room today, but as an athlete, before any big competition, you or your coach are put yourself through a sequence of tests or trials or scenarios in words training. This training is meant to not just cause pain in your body, but to deliver the ability to resist the pain and self-doubt when it's time to rise to the occasion. Developing discipline is the goal. Discipline, obedience through hard times. So when it is time to go into competition or battle, mm -hmm. you'll be able to persevere. Yeah. You're no longer stuck on what has caused you to stay so stagnant. But you're able to move forward. Another scripture that goes with this is Psalms 119, verse 71. <clears throat> My suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. I don't know about y'all, but one thing God has taught me that whenever he puts me through a trial or any situation, it's always to teach me a lesson. A lesson that's meant to serve a purpose in my life. To direct me in one direction to go to another direction. All right. It's always meant to give you better feedback and better understanding of your situations. It gives you revelation. Once he allows you to see it, then you understand why you went through what you went through. Come on, right. What caused you to get to that certain point in your life? The hurt, the pain, the sorrow, all the things that in the moment as you looked at it, it felt you at your deepest, your lowest part. Yeah. But it was actually preparing you and building you up towards where you are now. Yeah. For those right now that may be in their own suffering, their own pain and trial, mm -hmm. understand that there is a purpose, a greater goal to achieve throughout all that. The building up of yourself, your character, your knowledge, your understanding, your physical power to persevere through hard trials when they get tough. It's all meant for the obedience to be developed in your life. Let God's will be done. Let God's will be done. Although the challenges get tough, Remember, there's nothing compared to the victory that will come at the end. Once God can see the discipline, the obedience, and the maturity that has developed in you uh -huh. through your suffering, He will grant you the reward of victory. The victory over life, the victory over your challenges, the victory over your sorrow. Yeah, yeah. All the things that as you look at it, it seems like it's tough. Mm -hmm. But once you get to your destination, once you get to the goal, the end point, mm -hmm. you understand that it was nothing compared to what was right there before your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Suffering to win. Yeah. Suffering to win. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I believe the people that built this place. All right now. Had to go through some suffering. Yeah. Had to go through some suffering. Mm. The amount of history that was put into this very building, the very foundation, mm -hmm. had to go through some suffering. Yes. Yes. But who's there to say that the very goal that was meant to be achieved mm -hmm. isn't this moment right now? Oh. It took 20 years to get back into this very building. Mm -hmm. 20 years to preach another sermon uh, to the family, to the evidence. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 20 years to give grace and glory to the past people's names. Yeah. Our aunts, our cousins, yeah. our uncles, our grandfathers. Mm -hmm. All the people that put pain and sorrow to get to this very place. Yeah. 
suffering to win. So when you're going through your next trial or scenario or situation, ask yourself before you feel low down, before you feel like you're about to give up, ask yourself what is your end goal? <laughs> and if you don't know, ask God. Yeah. That's what right. gladly reveal it to you. He will reveal to you the very purpose in your life, the very purpose for your suffering. You have to survive through the suffering to figure out the meaning, to figure out the very purpose of why you even put into those situations. Because sometimes as we go through trials and situations, we, we start to feel so bad. We start to doubt the God. Why are we going through this? I thought he was a loving God. Why is he putting me through this hurt? Yeah. This pain, yes. this agony. That's right. Mm. Why did he take my my loved one? Uh. Yeah. All these different things that come to mind through the suffering. Uh -huh. But you have to understand that very suffering was meant to build character in your lives, yeah. to build understanding, to give you revelation, to oh. give you all the different things that would need, all the key components to build you up to who you are today. That's right. Yeah. Suffering to win. Yeah. Understand the very things that you go through your life. They get tough. But you have to build yourself up. Not only, you, not only that, but you have to surround yourself around people that are going through the same thing sometimes. That's right. To make sure that you're not going through it by yourself. Yeah. There's a scripture that says... The troubles that we're going through are nothing compared to those that yeah. are going through the same thing yeah. around the world. Yeah. Our brothers and sisters are going through the very things that we seem or feel like we're going through by ourselves. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we get scared to ask, are you going through anything? Are you having hard times? In reality, that's sometimes what people need. The understanding that I'm not going through this by myself. That I'm not going through this preparation by myself. Referring back to that as an athlete. On an athlete. If you're an athlete, you're on a team. A team of people that are going through the same trials and suffering and preparation by the same person. Yeah. I want y'all to imagine y'all on a team of any sport. And besides y'all, y'all teammates could be y'all family members, y'all coach, y'all coach's God. Excuse me. Putting y'all through that training, that preparation for it the competition, the big leagues, the very goal, the end goal. That's what we'll all face. But once y'all have finished that trials, once y'all have finished those scenarios, once y'all have finished those different, those different times and hard times, y'all understand that once y'all get there, it was all worth it. That's right. It was all worth it. There's a song that says, once I get to heaven, I want to hear God's verse say, well done. Yeah. 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 Well done. Well done. I'm glad you didn't fail. I'm glad that you didn't quit out on yourself. Yeah. I'm glad that you kept pushing. Amen. Not by yourself, but with your teammates, your family members, your loved ones. The ones that are still here to bring y'all together and hold each other together as a unit. Push through the hard times. Suffering to win. Suffering to win. Thank you.
may not have been able to see. <laughs> she did. She's not here today. She's not here today physically. My grandparents aren't here physically to see. But we are so limited in the finite. And one of our greatest troubles is that we keep bringing God down into our finite so that we can understand it. His ways are not our ways. His understanding are not our understanding. He does things differently. He does not function in the limitations that we have. And one of our limitations is we can only handle the present. Because we're bound in time to only deal with this. We can hardly remember yesterday and we can't figure out tomorrow. We can Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then you transplant that little seedling uh -huh. into the lives of another. Yeah. And they take it a little further. Yeah. And they take it a little further. And they take it a little further. And sometimes the fruit tree is not until all the way down there. But the fruit is always in the seed. So it's in us because the seed always has the whole plant in it. But sometimes the fruit that we think doesn't come for a while. But that way God begins to draw generations to himself in this project that he's about. Then just having one person do it. So no, David, not you. You plan for the temple, yeah. and Solomon will build the temple. Yeah. 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 Moses, you take them out of Egypt, yeah. but Joshua, you're going to lead them into the promised land. Yeah. Yeah. Even with Jesus, Jesus, your human life is going to be limited to these 33 years. Hmm. Oh, that he did. But John records and says, but greater things. <laughs> With the seed that I have planted in my disciples, greater things yes. will be done. Not because it's more than what, but because Jesus could do what Jesus could do in these 33 years. It will, he limited himself to be able to do. But the generations beyond him were still hmm. bearing the fruit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So relax a little bit. You don't have to solve it all in your life. Yeah. Relax a little bit. Yeah. You don't have to accomplish it all in your life. Yeah. Relax a little bit. Right. Your job is to make sure that everything that God has promised yeah. in an unshakable confidence in our great God yeah. is transferred to the next generation. Yeah. Psalm 145, one generation shall tell the next generation, 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 the wondrous works of our God. Yeah. And you'll watch and you'll see. You'll watch and you'll see that one day, You'll see Alice and Dan Evans playing and singing at the piano. Yeah. Then you'll blink your eyes just a little bit, and you'll see Michael playing at the piano. Yeah. Then you'll blink your eyes another bit, and you'll see Michael and Josiah playing. Yeah. And then you'll blink your eyes another bit, and you'll see Josiah and somebody else. And then you'll see somebody and somebody else, and you'll see how God does business. Yeah. That's just how he yeah. works. It's just how he works. And you're right. I mean, I get my grandfather, grandmother. They're not here, and those before them not here. But in the portrait that God is painting, very much present. Yes, yes, yes as a layer in this artwork that he keeps creating. So be faithful. Walk by faith and not by sight. Don't be duped into believing that it all depends on you. God works in generations. It's going to hurt your feelings. Sometimes Sometimes he will hold back even what you can do just so someone else can do it. Yeah. And you'll wonder, I don't understand why it's not working for me. Because I could, I could do it. Sometimes he'll hold you back just so someone else, a next generation, can take it. Because if he has your heart, it's a benefit to him to just kind of grab the heart of the next. One generation. So a server of people, the man who loves people mm -hmm. and will do anything to serve people, yeah, yeah. has children who serve people That's right. and will do anything to serve people. Yeah. So when well done, good and faithful, well. the well done, even when, even when we 
are not serving. We are still serving. Yeah. Because you are an extension of what your father is doing. You are an extension of what your parents did. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. So Lord, help us to trust you. Help us to release all of our definitions of how this life ought to work. Help us to connect with your understanding of generations. Help us, God. Help us, God, to find our place in the current of what has gone before, in the celebration of what's happening now, and in the connection of what will happen to come. Help us just relax and settle in our place. Lord, that you're the author of this. That we don't have to make this happen. We just have to cooperate with what you're doing. With, with what you've already put into motion. <laughs> so help us, God. Help us, God. To, as a generation, help us to tell the next generation the wondrous works of our God. <laughs> So children who are not yet even born will know that there is a God in the heaven's family who's worthy of all praise and honor and who can be trusted. Who can be trusted. And that we can be confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in mm -hmm. us <laughs> will be faithful to complete it. We trust you for that. In the strong name of Jesus. for me first. I'll, I'll pray for us. But in just, would you pray for the person on your right first? Mm -hmm. Just pray for the person. And, and pray like you would want someone to pray for you. You say, I don't know how to pray. Well, just pray whatever good thing you would want someone to say for you. Just silently. You don't even have to pray it out loud. But would you just pray for the person to your right first? Pray for whoever's on your right. Thank you.
pray for me. Here it is. Good. 
That's how I got my start in the business. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make a report as far as um, the offering, the total amount, um, but before I do so, I understand that there were some late arrivals after the offering, <clears throat> so if you would like to bless this church, you can do so at this time so we can add that to the total so that we can make a report as far as what the Evans family will be turning over to the church. And um, I will be remiss if I don't open the mic back up to the, the woman of this house. So, Pastor Johnson, if you would like to say something. Uh, yes, I would. Thank you so much for returning back home. It has been truly a blessing. I think I've been blessed more than you guys have been blessed to hear the story of your ancestors, because ancestry and genealogy is so important. We must teach the next generation. That's part of my passion of ministry. We have to tell the next one, because how will they know about the goodness of the That's Lord right. unless we tell them that? My trustees, I give them such a hard time, but they know I love them unconditionally, Brother Slim, because they did yesterday morning, then they we had a usher program, and they were serving again. So, Brother Slim, thank you again. Thank you, thank you so much for all that you've done. Her son, Jay, you know I, I love you. She pulled double duty yesterday and here again today. Thank you so much. Brother Ronnell, again, pulled triple duty and here again this morning. Uh, Brother Johnson, Brother uh, Jones, once again, thank you gentlemen so much. Like I said, you pulled double duty yesterday and you're here again today doing the work of the Lord. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough. So thank you so much.
again, 670. Oh. So we're thankful that uh, we have blessed the church with $670. Thank you all for your uh, donation and <clears throat> thank you all for coming out today. And um, again, special thanks to everyone. Safe travels, enjoy your holiday today, and um, prayerfully, we'll be back in this house again next year. Um, just be prepared, okay? And uh, while we have your attention, always read your email, always check the family page, because that's where the information flow through. So have a great time, and thank you all for coming. Any other comments before we... Close out. Special thanks to Reverend Veronica Green for giving up of her time. And uh, all the uh, also members of Peter's United Methodist Church who came out to support. Thank you all for coming out. Um, we thank you, and I'm quite sure you all know of Henry and Mabel Evans. So again, thank you, and uh, cousin Mabel, thank you for taking us back. Because we do remember that, that big skillet on the stove, on that wooden stove, that's right. and how Dee had to make the fire. Yes. You know, yes. it's things like that. The hogs. See? <laughs> the chicken. Yeah, the pot of beans on the stove. Look, see? They take us back. Some of y'all don't even know about the pot of beans. Y'all don't even want pot of beans. <laughs> And we had to go outside yes, to that outside toilet. Yes, you know, there was not no flushing. No. You know, no running water. Get, no running water. water. You had to get the water. You had to get the water, you had to get the wood, and you had to get the chips. You know, all of that. You know, and then, you know, it was especially during this time. You know, when in the summertime you had to go out to the outhouse, and before, as soon as you open the door, you better look around. You know, because you don't want to turn up and uh, something is uh, crawling. But it was just those type of memories, and then we look and see that we in homes that we never imagined being in, cars we're driving we never imagined. You know. Crafts, you know, having the skill to do things. Yeah. Our grandparents was uh, in the field, mm -hmm. yeah. but we in the office. Right. Yeah. God, what a blessing! Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, it was all in God's plan. Yeah. So again, um, where you came from. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You never know what the future holds. Yes. Back there. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. So again, you all have a great time. It's 12:30, and we're out of here. Bless you.